hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel on your screen is a usual girl blessing Le Coco, Le if you're new yes smash the subscribe button and turn off your notification bell so that you can be notified anytime i post a new video a new video a new video a so today guys i'm going to be talking about the possible causes of c-section you should know as i told you guys from my previous video that i was going to make this video for you all because for the love of you all so i went to my natal visit and we learned a lot a whole lot so this is one of the things I was able to jot down because you know of the importance, you know. So here I am making this video for you guys. So a lot of applause for you. So that's it, guys. A quick disclaimer, guys. I am not a professional, a medical professional. Yeah, nothing. I have nothing to do with medicine or whatever. But this is what I learned, and I thought it's you know okay to share with you guys. So. You're so number one is preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is a condition in pregnancy. I think it's a complication in pregnancy that is mostly caused by hypertension. And this is a very like dreading condition in pregnancy. It could lead to coma, it could lead to convulsion, it could lead to death. And the only cure to preeclampsia is uh, the birth of the baby, which is which is true, you know. Um, this section so guys if there's anything that is worrying you and you're thinking about and you know that you're pregnant <laughs> I am telling you for the love with the love of God just you know have that thing well one side when after give, after giving birth you can start with your thinking again because you don't want no hypertension I know women when we are pregnant we are, we are at a higher risk of having all those you know kind of your manama stuff so you don't want that if you're clumsy, yeah, no guys it could lead to death no so number two is leading bridge or twins. So leading bridge is when you have when you are having twins or more than two babies, and the first child that is supposed to come out is in bridge position. In bridge position, you guys know what bridge is now. That could cause a C-section because you can't give birth to a bridge baby. A bridge baby. I don't know if it happens in Nigeria, but I know that in the outside countries, in the outside countries. Uh, people like the wife they are used to in fact most of them do give birth to um, bridge baby you can see a baby coming out with her anus or with the legs and they deliver the baby normally so I don't know if it has happened to anyone here in Nigeria I've not heard of any so twin pregnancy can cause you know c-section and if you're pregnant and your first baby to come out is in bridge position that could actually cause a c-section the third one is a big baby. A big baby is a baby that weighs up to 4.5 kg to 4.5 kg to 5 kg. And if you're having a big baby and you know your stuff is not like <laughs> very elastic, that could equally lead to you know C-section. And uh, that is why it is advised you know to cut down the things that we eat while we are pregnant in order to avoid you know a baby getting big but I don't think that it's almost all the time that what you eat contributes to uh, the size of your baby like not a lady that give, gives birth to big big babies guys huge huge babies and because of you know the size of her babies it's almost impossible for her to deliver vaginally so she always you know delivers her children through c-section so when she was pregnant with her last baby she stopped eating she started serving herself she even went ahead to be taking liptins and all of that at the end of the day she gave birth to a baby that weighs i think 4.5 kg which is almost like 5 kg me personally <laughs> what i fear most most in giving birth vaginally is tear i don't want to tear in my life guys i want no tear but that place i know i want no tear guys i don't want it it's painful okay so i try to give birth to my child at least that is this that seven weeks that way they can still be weighing around three point something kg and that's okay for me i beg when they come out they can start weighing whatever so for now 
that's six weeks that's seven weeks i don't need notes here i don't need no c-section number four guys is failed induction we all know what failed induction now induction failure means when maybe you're you are laboring, you are laboring, but the labor is not progressing. Like you are, you you've labored for like hours, and you are still in one setting without dilation. Uh, I mean, your baby might get, you know, start getting tired, or the heartbeat might start dropping, and you yourself you'll be feeling feeling very weak. Like even if you are asked to push your child, you can no longer have the energy to push. So that also can lead to C-section number five is prolonged labor this is almost the same thing with you know failed induction prolonged prolonged labor is when you've labored and labored and labored without an induction though maybe you're just laboring on your own or even with the help of an induction if you've been laboring for like hours and like days and there's no progress you might you know the doctor might have no choice to present to you the option of c-section if that's the only way for you and your baby you know to it will be okay so that also can lead to prolonged labor can lead to c-section number six is protein like having protein in your urine we know that when you are pregnant you are prone to having high levels of protein and that is not okay for a pregnant person for a pregnant woman it's not advised to have you know excess protein in your urine so you have to watch the protein intake and all that all those milkshake lovers and all that need to be watching that because you don't want no protein in your urine and the number six is cord obstruction or tie cord obstruction is when the umbilical cord ties the child in the womb so well that the child can't even make a move or try to you know, come out of the uh, womb or a cord, a cord tie is also when it may be a cord you know ties the child the baby in the neck that when the baby tries to come out like when the baby tries to come out the umbilical cord is like pulling the placenta out of the you know walls of uterus and that could actually lead to bleeding so if that is the case with uh, your pregnancy you might have to be you know operated on so that that way your baby can be you know uncorded <laughs> easily number eight is overdue pregnancy guys i've seen a lot of people carry their pregnancy to 43 weeks as in, I don't even know how they do it. How can somebody even think of carrying their pregnancy to 42 weeks? As in, you are waiting for labor, you carry your pregnancy to 42 weeks. Like, I can't do that. No, me, I'm even praying that God should bring this thing down to 30 weeks so that I can go and give birth. <laughs> and somebody will carry their pregnancy to 42 weeks. 43 weeks like what the heck what are you waiting for so this can actually cause a c-section if you don't labor and maybe probably uh you were induced and the induction is not like working your body is not accepting it you might have to be you know operated on and just do, do that once and for and get the baby out then the number nine is fibroid in pregnancy guys you know that when you have a fibroid not you guys please you are blessed people we, we don't we don't do we don't do fibroid around here no so when someone has you know fibroid and eventually by god's grace they get pregnant you know that it's not advisable for them you know to give birth vaginally you know for the sake of their life so when you have when someone has you know fibroid and is now pregnant on top the person might you know have to be operated on to you know so that uh, they can equally remove the baby and as well take out the fibroid at the same time so i think this is a win-win kind of a thing for anybody that has that was like suffering from that has you know fibroid or that is suffering from you know fibroid in pregnancy that thing can be really painful i have read that it is really really painful just having fibroid alone is dead as painful talk more of when you have fibroid and now pregnant on top guys like we don't pray for such no this is a holy ground we don't pray for such around here the number nine i visit number 10 i don't even know the number that i am stationary bp and diabetes we all know what that one is now when you are pregnant you are prone to having you know high level of sugar prone to having bp which is which is why I talked about you know overthinking if you are pregnant you know to avoid preeclampsia. So when you are pregnant, you should you know try not to overthink yourself, overwork yourself, overstress yourself, so you can be in a good level and a good state of mind to give birth to your child. You know properly. You know there's not there's not excuse me guys there's no like 
way of delivering a child that is not proper, either C-section or vaginally, all of them is okay. All of them is fine. I've tested you both and <laughs> guys, all of them are life-saving. If God gives you the grace to come out alive, praise the Lord. But you need, you know, to help yourself. We need to help ourselves by, you know, taking care of our mind, taking care of ourselves, receiving fresh air, not allowing the stress and problems of life to, you know, cause more problems to us because we handle not to finish. The number 11 is fertile distress. Fertile distress is when the baby in the womb is tired, no longer comfortable, and the heart rate is like dropping, dropping, and keep dropping. Guys, there is no option in this world. You just have to be operated on in this, you know, condition or you just might, the person just might lose the baby. And nobody wants to carry a child for nine months and after all the nauseousness and all the yamanyama stuff, you now come back with empty and dead. Ah, God forbid though, please no. So if you are in a condition like that, which I pray that none of you that are pregnant out there would be, um, the only solution is oppression. If you get operated on and you will get operated on and the baby will be taken out and monitored, you know, and everything will come back to normal. Then the final and last one is placenta abruption. Abruption, placenta rupture. Placenta rupture is when the placenta that is giving food, air, and nutrients to the baby starts, you know, abrupturing from the, you know, uterus, from the walls of uterus. So when that is start happening, um, the only solution for it is for you to be, you know, operated on. That's the only solution is operation. When when a placenta is rupturing from the membranes of the uterus, well, it, please let me not speak English that I don't know. But when the uh, when the placenta is coming out, it's like detaching itself. Yes, ah, it's okay. Have pray. When the placenta is, is detaching itself from the walls of your uterus, oh my goodness. <laughs> then that means that baby can, you know, stop receiving the air that it normally gets to the baby, the nutrients, the food, all those good stuff, you know, that keeps the baby, that keeps the baby alive, and those things will cut, and when that cut, the baby, you know, will not uh, survive it. So, when the doctor notices that your placenta is, you know, detaching itself from the walls of your uterus, you might have to, you know, go for emergency section and try to help your baby, and they will try to help your baby and yourself. In all of these guys, honestly, there is no form of, you know, childbearing that is uh, worse. If it is C-section, it's okay. If it is vaginal birth, it's okay. But we know that we're all praying for vaginal birth because C-section, guys, <laughs> for me, I'm sorry. A lot of people prefer C-section, A lot of people choose C-section to vaginal delivery. They don't want to go through, the, you know, the pain of labor and everything. And Honestly, uh, this in, um, what's it called? Uh, epidural is not like really common here. I don't know if it is, but in my area, it's not like really common. And I've heard, which I'm not sure, I've heard that, that the side effects of epidural is, you know, it causes back pain, you know, a lot of back pain. And when that person starts getting older, the back pain you know, becomes more severe. And <laughs> nobody wants to be 40 years and be walking like this. Just stick. No. So people now try to avoid that. So people option for you know C-section. C-section. Have a friend and the classmate that till today till tomorrow it has to be C-section. She cannot go and die. So that's what she will always say. So that the pain is too much for her to be at her hands. So she will always option for C-section, which is good, guys. I've tested both of them. They are both good. But if I should take, I'm going to take vaginal breath because that place. It is meant for giving birth, and the only thing that I don't like about C-section, guys, is the starvation, is the hunger after that comes after C-section. I I nearly I nearly died of hunger, guys, when I did my my first C-section in my life, guys. I never want to experience that. I remember when I gave birth to my first child, like after giving birth, I rested. When I woke up, there were different types and varieties of food. God, I was just eating, eating. But when I gave birth to my second one, when I woke up, like. <laughs> Nobody is bringing food now. I, I was like, what's happening? I don't go to job. No, they're not giving me food. They don't even water. They even take water. That is not okay for me. For someone that left God for like almost two days and then no food. 
but be it c-section be it vagina birth all is good if the, the the only the only thing is to go in there and come out okay go in there and come out with your baby go in there and come out alive and that's just it at the end of the day we pray for a successful birth whether vagina birth c-section birth birth is birth at the end of the day we pray for a successful one and yeah that's it for this video guys let me know if you guys enjoy this type of videos i don't mind making them for you all let me know if you're pregnant and you're watching this please leave me a comment in the comment section for those that live outside you know leave a comment for me in my comment section you guys are seriously the ultimate honestly i can't trade you up for the for anything at all you guys are just showing me that this little girl is doing something and i'm grateful for that that actually keeps me going so thank you all so 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 much and that's it guys for this video i hope you guys learned one or two in this video so if you do give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel as usual leave me a comment in the comment section and until then i will see you guys in my next video love you guys so much bye